All right, so everyone has to put guards <clears throat> and judges and policemen. Says the Rebbe, that's only now. But in the future, we won't need policemen. In the future, that's what Isaiah, the prophet, says, and that's what we request every day in our prayers. We say, God, give us back our judges and our, our advisors. Alpisa, according to this, so he says, why? Because at it, when the Jewish people do not want to do what God wants, So then they're not going to listen to the judges, and you're going to have to have policemen show dream to enforce what the judges say. Because <clears throat> the judges are going to be the people that know what the Torah says and what the Torah wants. But when the Jewish people do want to do what God says, they just don't know all the time exactly what it is, because the Torah is very complicated. So then they have to go to ask, ask judges, but they, they ask the judges in order to know what to do. They want to do what God says. You won't need policemen. Al Pisa, according to this, we can understand why should be yud that in the future, yud means the, the appointed time, the, the, the what we're the goal will be added, Yoatsayach. They'll be added advisors in addition to the judges. What, uh, if people want to know, what do we say? In the future, people will want to know, the whole world will want to know what God wants. They'll be interested. People will want to know what God wants. And that's why you'll have to have the judges. They'll go to the judges and they'll say, listen, I'm thinking like this. What do you think? Your honor. Say, no, no, no. If you want... To do what God wants, you have to do like this and like this. Everybody says, so what do you have to have advisors for? Everybody says, Kevin, since Yishalem was a koach, l'kach, shebegu'ula yiyah b'nei Yisrael b'shalem was, that it, in order that the Jewish people will be complete, be a kaimu at the horot, and they'll do what the shoftim say, what the judges say, without any policemen. This is only when there are judges and advisors. Why? What is a judge and what's an advisor? A shofet, he's a judge, he's way above everybody. The judge just says what it says in the books. Why are you going to a judge? Because you say the judge, he knows what's right and wrong. He knows how to, he really knows what God wants. The judge, a shofet, is supposed to be a person that he's really attached to to the true will of God, as it says in the Torah. Now, the Torah, as we know very well, the Torah was written in a way that it has to be explained. Even the Ten Commandments, right? You can't take the Torah at face value. It can't be done. Now, of course, there's always people that try to destroy Judaism and say, yes, you can. There was the Tzedukim, and there was the, the Kar Karaim, and these... But the fact is, you can't take the Torah face value. You have to, Torah has to be interpreted properly by really God fearing Jews. Those are the Shoftim, those are the judges. The judges, they're totally, that's their whole occupation in their whole life. They're only thinking all the time, what does God want? They're learning the Torah, deep in, deeper, deeper, deeper aspects of the Torah. That's the true judges. First of all, they're, they're elevated from the, the rest of the people, whether because of their knowledge and their understanding in the laws or because of a bitl, because they are totally connected to God. And also they're totally connected to God in their thought, speech, and action every moment. And the person who's coming to ask he surrenders himself to the judge. He sort of knocks himself out. 
Kiratsono shall a nishpat. Even if it, this is not what the the how do you say the, the litigant wants, right? Two people come into they say, you know, the, he says that the, the ox belongs to him. He says the ox belongs to him. And what what everybody's the, the ox is five thousand dollars. I need the ox. One says, what are you talking about? Just my ox. They go in front of the judge, and the judge says, the ox belongs to Shmerel. Beryl. Now Beryl just lost five thousand dollars, at least according to what he thinks. It's supposed to be the process. Okay, that's that's what I wanted. I just wanted to know what God wants, right? It's not what I want. I would have liked to have the money. I think that the, the ox belongs to me. But it, if that's what the judge says, then I knock myself out. I am buttle to the judge. I surrender myself. A shofet pasek the din. The judge decides the law. <clears throat> he gives a commandment. And the person who's judge says, okay, I accept it. That's a judge. A judge is above, right? The judge says something, you don't say anything back. That's the, not, it's not the case, the yo'etz, an advisor. Kishemo kenu, kun noten eitzatov, he gives advice. Balashan Chazal, like it says, eitzatov kamashvam. It's just telling you an optional thing. I'm giving you a good advice. You don't have to take it if you don't want to. Inyan zem morasha, yo'etz, the person who's giving the, Advice as an advisor, he's like on the same level. This is eye to eye. Looking, therefore, it's a love. Therefore, the advisor is giving him advice, not from above to below, but like, like a friend. Equal, equal. I'm giving you just a, how do you say, an objective view. Not God's opinion. You came and you want advice from me? I'll give you, but this is what I think. The judge doesn't say that. The judge says, this is what God thinks. This is what the Torah says. And the litigant, right, says, okay, this is God's will. I give myself over. I knock myself out. God wants that. He wants people to totally surrender themselves to him. But that's not all he wants. He also wants people to have their personalities. He wants people to make their own decisions. So that's what the advisors are for. Advisors are people that come and say, listen, maybe I'll give you another angle to look at this thing, and then you can make your own decision. Kate Sadlitneg, I'm giving you advice. Hashomea, Mavin Umunachetzlo, the who Margi Shazel Winyan Tova world. Now the person comes and he doesn't negate himself like he does with the judge. Your honor, right? This is not what the outcome I would like, but if this is what you say, then I surrender myself to it. That's the judge. But the advisor says, listen, what do you think about this? I think that, oh, that's a good thing. Let me think about this, right? He says, he doesn't feel, he just feels that this is a good thing if it's good for me or not. It's a, it's a, or maybe it's not a good advice. Ela chuku says the, 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 the judge, he gives him the decision. The advisor gives him advice. By the judge, he sort of knocks himself out completely. By the advisor, it makes him into more of a human being. So there's two aspects of being a human being. One aspect of being a human being is that you can surrender yourself to the truth. Uh, an, an animal can't do that. I want to do this, but if, if it's not right, so I'll go against my, my will. My, this is an amazing thing. But, but a person can't live like that. Only. That has to be one facet of your personality. Right? Take a simple example. God. We don't understand God. If God says you have to put on tefillin, then you have to do it. If God says you have to put on tefillin a certain way, then you have to do that. Right? But God doesn't tell us how to come to love him. How you're supposed to love God. You're supposed to love God. That's up to you. That's, uh, you have to develop that yourself. <clears throat> you can't love God in the same way that you put on tefillin. It's not just a, a mechanical thing. The, the, for that, you need an advisor. The judge can't tell you, okay, love God. <clears throat> you have to have an advisor. Listen, maybe you could do it this way because it's a personal thing. It comes from your own personality, your own soul. Alder says similarly, movement can understand the difference between a judge and an advisor. <laughs> Regarding the days of the Mashiach, Yesh Bezeh, there is what Shein Bezeh. Maila says, yo, it's the main good thing about the advisor is 
Shazim Kabul Yotor Eitzel Shomia, that it becomes accepted by the one who's listening to the advice. Zechoderbo, the Pinimuso, it permeates into his being. It becomes part of him. That's an advisor. What do you think about this? Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty good. I think that let's talk it over. Cave and Shin Shemuna Hetzel, because the thing gets rested. It's good for me. He feels it's good for him. Shazu, he eats it over. This is the advisor. The good thing about a judge, though, is. Since the judge, he gives orders in a way that's above the person, but that's much higher, in infinitely, if you want to call it higher, than the litigant, to the point where the litigant has to sometimes wipe his opinions out totally. This gives, <clears throat> this gives to the judge that he has the power to decide the laws from the Torah, then this gives the judge a power which is incomparable to the advisor. It comes from above. This forces a person. To the Mashiach is going to be something like this. this is the Mashiach is going to be a king, right? He'll be a king like King David, and also be a teacher like Moses. We're going to talk about that. And on one hand, you have to have two parts of your personality. One part is you have to be totally surrendered to the truth, even if it's totally against everything you understand, everything you know, everything your whole your whole ideas and your ideals in life. You, if, if it's not true, you have to just surrender yourself totally to the truth. That's one side. But the other side is, is that you have to have love. You have to be human. <clears throat> you have to have mercy. You have to have understanding. You have to do things according to your own unique way. The judge tells everybody what to do the same thing, right? Anybody who comes to the case is going to be the same exact case, right? That's what the Torah says. But the advisor, everybody is different. It's the shofet. If so, by the judge, it comes out. The main thing is the emphasis is on the judge, what the judge says. The litigant has to surrender himself to the judge. But by the advisor, the main thing is, is the person that's being advised. It's the receiver. Similarly, has to be in a general service of man. Man has to serve God on his own. See you uh, arousal from below. And also, <clears throat> there is siwa milamayla, and a person has to serve from how God helps him. An arousal from, like the difference between Rosh Hashanah, where we serve God from below, we sound the shofar, we pray, and Passover, God took us out. He, God did everything. One stresses what we do. The other stresses what God does. Alder says, similarly, even more, these two things, <clears throat> will be we can even break it down even more how God helps us from above sometimes God helps us from above in a way which is relevant to us <clears throat> it helps us in an inner way sometimes God helps us in a way where we can understand things which are relevant to us and some those are usually you know, miracles, God took us out of Egypt. We said, these are amazing things. And then there are sometimes God does things that are completely not relevant to us. We can't, like it says in Mount Sinai, the Jews said they couldn't take it. They just didn't negate themselves. Similarly, there are these two things. <clears throat> and <clears throat> there's two aspects in service when a person serves God from below to above. On one hand, there's certain things that a person serving God from below, that have to be that a person, de he declares, he, he decrees on himself. Like the Torah. <clears throat> that a person gets help from below to above, which is, a person thought he couldn't do things like this. It's, a person gets aid from above that changes him to a different person. But then there's also a person serves God that how does, 
serves God in a way that it's from the inside of the person. The person feels that this is for his own good. Okay, so what are we saying here? We're saying in the future redemption, there's going to be a new thing called advisors. Advisors. Now, as we are now, there are judges that they know the truth. They say, but people, people don't want to accept it. So they have to be forced totally to do what God wants. Ju there's, the, there's, 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 there's a policeman that force you. But in the future, it won't be that way. In the future, the days of the Mashiach, everyone will want to know what God wants. <clears throat> There'll be judges that will tell people to do what God wants, even against your will. But there won't have to be policemen because everybody will want to do it. But sometimes you want to know what's the best way to do it. That's why you have advisors. There'll be advisors. There won't be policemen. The advisors will advise you. They'll put the human aspect into it. And that there's no end to it. I hope he's according to this. You can understand the difference between Shoftayach, like it says, why it says Bashoftayach, Berishona, and Yotayach, it says Batchila. It says, we say, give us back our judges like in the beginning and our advisors like in the onset. Both of the words pretty much mean the same thing. It says, no, it doesn't mean the same thing. The difference between Rishona, the beginning, and Tchila, and onset, Rishona means Me'ikara, something that was there in the beginning. It doesn't have to be something that comes afterwards. Hayinu Shezeu Kodem Atchalatenia. This is something that happens before. <clears throat> before. A person could go to university, right? You want to become a doctor? First, you have to go to the university. That's the first thing. It doesn't mean you go to university that you're going to be a doctor. In that case, the onset of being a doctor, you're beginning to be a doctor. The beginning, this shows that you're actually doing something. We can say that this is also the difference between shoftayach, shoftayach, kirishona, that your judges, like in the head, and your tzayach are in the onset, in the beginning. That also because in regarding to the judges and the advisors, there's a big difference between them, which is what does it mean? You say a judge is someone that's totally above you. The idea of a judge, he's like Kurishona. The judge is the main thing about a judge and the litigant. The main thing is what the judge says. The judge says everybody has to listen to him. So this is a way of commanding from above. It doesn't necessarily start anything. The judge is, he, he's giving his opinion, right? Everyone is supposed to listen. The Lowit Chashvut, and it doesn't really matter to the judge so much what the people actually do. Or if even if they're able to do it, look, and therefore it says there can be a little bit of a of a break between what the shofit, the judge says, and what the people do. The judge decides his law, and this this is like the head, and only afterwards can there be something new. Do the people actually? accept the law. Therefore, you had to have once, there used to be policemen, because the judge would say what he said, and people would say, I'm not going to do it at all. So a judge is not beginning really anything. He's just like the head. He's like the first. Yeah, the judge says what to do. Therefore, it says by the judges, Kirishona, like in the head, in the, be, in the, what is it, in the, 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 the first thing. The judges, Hashivo, Kirishona, in the first thing which is not the case, the idea of, a, of an advisor, the advisors, it says, they actually begin something. The advisors, it's, it's on your level. Hari, show me, so the person who listens to the advice <clears throat> means that he's ready for the advice. He wants, to, he, he wants something that's going to have an effect on him. 
the well, person goes to the judge, he's expecting the judge will say like he wants, but if the judge says the opposite, then <clears throat> maybe he won't accept it, which is not the case the advisor. The advisor, he goes to the advisor and says, listen, give me some advice, you know, what to do. The advisor says, what about this? He says, nah, I don't like that. It doesn't, doesn't fit me. Do something else. So the whole thing of the advisor is the advisor is not just <clears throat> the, the, the beginner. He's the onset. He starts something actually going on. He starts the, the whole process. The whole thing of, of a advisor is that it's going to be accepted. Not like a judge. A judge makes his decision. You want to accept it, accept it. You don't want to accept it. I'm telling you the truth. The whole thing of the advisor is that he wants to cause a change in the person who's being advised. This shows that he already began the person already began to listen, hatchala, that the person who's listening is already prepared. And so what do we have to do? We just have to reveal it to the other person because it's for his good. That's why it says, that's why it says, yotzai is kabatchila in the beginning because the advisor, he begins something. So now we can understand why it says, yotzai, we're going to have to stop here because I have to go, I'm sorry. According to this, we can understand why it says, your advisors in second person. Since, because it's stressed that it is your advisor, what does it mean, yours? It means <clears throat> because by means of the advisor, your advisor, he causes that the judge also becomes your judge. That the judge will, what the judge says, it won't be something separate from you. The advisor will tell you how to want to accept it. Okay, let's just go, go on, just in a short way, what's being talked about over here? What's, Mashiach is going to be a person that is going to show everyone who they really are. In order to do this, he's going to have to decree and make people accept things that they don't want to, against their will. That's a king. He's going to be a shofet. He'll be a shofet. He's going to tell everybody what the truth is. But on the other hand, the essence of what Mashiach is, is that people will change inside the want to do what's right. Not that they'll want to do what, what the king says, because if not, they'll get punished. They'll want to do what's right. They'll be self-motivated. And that's the whole idea of the advisors. There's going to be advisors as well. Mashiach is really going to do both things. On one hand, they'll come and give amazing advice to people to help them in a way they can understand. But another way, the Mashiach is going to decree things that people won't want to do. You can look in the letters of Lubavitch Rebbe, this amazing advice that he gives to people. Amazing advice. On all, there's, there's well, how many are 30 books now of, of, of the Rebbe's letters? I have 27. I think there's more. <clears throat> and that's just like the first 10 something years of the Rebbe's, and that's not all the letters that they found. Amazing, beautiful advice that the Rebbe gives to people. But on the other hand, there's also orders that the Rebbe, for instance, told everybody, go out on the streets and put the fill in on people. Nobody wanted to do it. Who goes out and puts the fill in on people? The, the other religious groups, Jewish groups, wonderful people, people that have love of every Jew, no, you get, but you've got to be crazy to go on the street and ask people to put on the fill. Now it's more of a regular thing. <clears throat> and even still now, nobody does it. Because it's a crazy thing. You do it because the Rebbe said, that's a command. But on the other hand, <clears throat> the Rebbe gives a lot of advice, tremendous amounts of advice, how to get along with other people, how to how to get along with, with your, your family, how to get along with friends, how to get along with so there has to be both things present in the Mashiach. On one hand, to be more human. And on the other hand, to be more religious. As we'll talk about more God willing tomorrow. Let's just do the Yom Yom. I'm sorry I have to cut it short today because I just have somewhere very important to go. Yom Yom Chabad. 
But Semach Tzedek was nine years old. Alter Rebbe said from him, I, I accept it. I received from my teacher, who received from the, his teacher, the Baal Shem Tov, and the name of his teacher was Achi Hashiloni, who lived like I don't know, 2,000 years, something like that. That from the second day of Rosh Chodesh Elul, we say three chapters of Tehillim every day. Then on Yom Kippur, we say 36 chapters, nine before Kal Nidre, nine after Musaf, nine after Ni'ilah. In other words, by means of by this, we finish the whole entire Tehillim another time. And we say, as it is every month, we finish. We say the day, but every day add another three uh, psalms. And by means of this, on, on Yom Kippur, on Yom Kippur, <clears throat> you'll finish the whole Empire Book of Tillam. A person didn't start on the second day of Rosh Chodesh, so you should do that day on which he realizes, and then do the previous days that he didn't do, which he was missing first. Also, today we saw the chauffeur, we saw the chauffeur for everyone ready. Kodesh Tov, see you all at 3 o'clock, God willing.